<sighs> oh, what a day, what a lovely day. Today is the uh, vlog for April 9th. I slowly dart down to check the date. April 9th, and it was a lovely day, and especially after so much rain last week. I mean, we had we had one nice day on Friday, we had a nice day today, and now it looks like the next nice day might be this next weekend, or it might not be. So I just am enjoying this while it lasts. Got up past 70 degrees today, I think. Went for a walk this afternoon, uh, <clears throat> just during my, one of my breaks at work, but it was lovely. Um, so what's today? What have I done today? Well, I've thought about Ready Player One a whole lot. I think all my curmudgeonliness, what I heard was the book was just chock full of all these references and it was just a, a love letter to the 80s and it was a bunch of stuff that I grew up with and that was going to be great. And then I kept hearing stuff about how the, the author had trouble sort of creating female characters with any sort of depth and treating women almost as trophies and all sorts of things like they just sort of had a poor understanding of social whatever um, <clears throat> and since the book is about the will of a man who had trouble socializing that sort of feels like it could definitely be a thing. I'm not sure that I'm ever going to sit and read the book because of all these things, but the movie didn't seem to have the same sorts of problems. Like, okay, let's be real. Uh, I believe it absolutely fails the Bechdel test, which is um, basically, uh, th this is a test, I might not even be getting the name right, but the test is, do two female characters in the film have a conversation with each other? Okay, so that's the first thing. Do those female characters have a conversation about uh, anything except a man? That's the other thing. I think those are the only two criteria. So two female characters have to talk to each other, and whatever they're talking about, it can't be a man. You would be shocked how many films fail this test. It's really absurd that when men write, because men are the most prolific writers in Hollywood, they tend to forget that women talk about things with each other other than them. Weird, huh? So, the movie has sort of a dearth of female characters. Um, there's one on Team Good Guys. Um, and then there's one on Team Bad Guys. And uh, none of the female characters talk to each other in the whole movie that I remember. Um, except maybe very, very briefly. Um, <laughs> come to think of it, yes, I suppose it does pass the Bechdel test because a very short conversation occurs when one character basically reads the Miranda rights to another character and both of those characters are female. It almost seems like it was forced in there just to pass the Bechdel test. Um, and it's not much of a conversation because one doesn't actually say anything to the other. It's more like, so yeah, it's not a conversation because it's just one person passing information to another person. So, fails that silly little test, which just goes to show you that this movie still has trouble identifying how women interact in the game world. Which sort of, in a weird way, leads into another point of mine. I've been enjoying Elite Dangerous, and one of the things that I do when I enjoy a game is I try to imagine what it would be like to be a character in one of these game worlds and write from that perspective. It is fan fiction. Let's not beat around the bush. It is, uh, it, how would you want to say, transformative work. It, it's not actually transformative work in that you're not appropriating characters that you didn't create and putting in them into situations that weren't in the original work. That's technically, I think, what transformative works are. And especially uh, alternate universes where, you know, two characters are normally a knight and a princess, but they just end up being teenagers in a coffee shop in your fan fiction. That's, that's the sort of thing that when people say transformative works, that's generally what they're talking about. My thing is usually in a game where you can create your own character, coming up with that character's backstory. And while that is technically fan fiction, it 
sort of bridges a a weird uh, disconnect in that you're creating, I hesitate to use the term, an original character and then sort of writing out what they do in this fictional world that you did not create, that was created by someone else. So you're letting someone else build the world and then you're building a character in that world. What's great about this is that you can take the character out of the world, put them in a different world, and a world that you create, for example, and they stop being a fan fiction character, and they start being a character with, that exists in a separate universe that you've made. And my camera is a little high, so I'm going to... There we go. That's better. So... While this is theoretically Elite Dangerous fan fiction, because I'm playing Elite Dangerous and I'm going to sort of go by that world's rules, which is a fairly crunchy sci-fi world. It's fairly in line with science. It involves jumping between stars and ignoring relativity, but that's really one of the few things where it sort of jumps outside the realm of possibility. Um, because even when you're traveling, traveling at light speeds, you have to account for the gravity that planets around you are generating. Um, you can't interact in the real world in a meaningful way. It's sort of almost like an out-of-body experience compared to realistic space, uh, real relativistic space. Um, and it's just a means to allow for gameplay where you're flying between stars. Um, but everything else, it's just very, very science fiction -y. So... Um, it's nice to write in a, in a universe like that because I can just think of, okay, what's really possible in the world? Follow all those rules uh, for the most part. Just account for the setting and the fact that people can move between stars and live on space stations. Um, but other than that, it's fine. And so I could take this character and very easily work it into the Gundam universe, which is also very crunchy, very realistic sci-fi for the most part. Um, it would work in Star Trek or Star Wars, but it would feel maybe... Star Wars is probably a, a, a rougher fit. It would feel very sort of out of place, the, the fish-out-of-water feeling. Star Trek would work better. In fact, I got the idea from a, a Star Trek Next Generation plot um, with some fairly major tweaks around just to make things um, work better for, for what I wanted to do with it. So... Um, yeah, writing again. I find myself doing free prose writing a lot less these days. I don't know if I just got burned out with my book. I started trying to reread my book to get back into editing mode. I think I might have to wait until I'm on my two-month break to do that. <laughs> uh, because it's just... It's so easy to find something else to distract me. Well, that won't be... Uh, changing much if I'm on a two-month break. I just wake up and start playing video games first thing in the morning, and I often do. But uh, it's something to consider. But yeah, um, the weirdest thing of this, though, is that since a friend of mine got me into the game, she is uh, providing me character information for her character, and I'm going to incorporate her into the story. She's a very imaginative person, and she has a very good grounding in characterization, and uh, She's been feeding me information on uh, Discord uh, since before I went to dinner. Um, so I'm going to take her notes, write them down, um, and make some small alterations to the, the story that I wrote this morning. And hopefully I'll have a couple chapters. I might even put it up on an archive of our own. Depends. Depends on how much I like it uh, and how much I will, would be expected to keep Writing because the, these sort of things they're really nice exercises to just do to get in the habit of writing and get back into the pattern of writing. But you know, if you start and you write five chapters of something and then you're expected to just keep going and going and going and going, uh, and especially with a game like Elite Dangerous with no like set story path where you really make your own fun, so there's no in game plot to follow, it both works really well because you get to make your own story with your own goals and your own plot. and Basically, you're making everything up, so you, you, there's nothing from the actual game universe other than its universe, its world building, that you can appropriate. Anyway, wow, it went for almost 10 minutes doing this. So, um, I need to stop saying this between 5 and 10 minutes, because it usually is over 10 or slightly under 10. So, maybe I should say they're 5 to 15 minutes, uh, depending on how much I want to uh, wax poetic. But, enough for one day.
I've been Eric Spornitz, and tomorrow will be better.